Okay, um, so for this set of breakout sessions, uh, I need up here um, Don and Yachen from Sira, Anchi will be next, and then um, Research IC Africa and Lunar Asia to pitch your sessions. So, Don, you ready to go first? I think we're going to use the handheld, it'll be easier. If you just hold it up, people will yeah. be able to hear you. Absolutely. He'll turn it on, and then we'll cool. Slides. You can do that. Just this guy. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Don Slonwaite, and I'm here with my uh, co-patriot, uh, Yashin Chen. And we're from CIRA, that's the Canadian Internet Registration Authority. Uh, we uh, run .ca. Everybody looks at me when I say CIRA, and they go, I don't know what you're talking about. And I say, we run .ca, and they go, oh, okay. Um, but uh, yeah, back in 2011, we sort of started working with M-Labs because uh, we wanted to get a state of the internet in Canada. And uh, as everybody knows here, if you can't measure something, it's pretty hard to understand where it's going or where you want it to go. So uh, we, uh, based, we created our own internet performance test. Uh, and uh, we use the NDT test as the uh, basis for it. But we did add a few twists of our own. Uh, we created some unique visualizations uh, that for five years ago or stuff were pretty awesome. And uh, now we're learning a lot about Canada's internet but as well about the test, about what we want to test and where we want to move forward. Uh, and you know, we're really looking at the forward uh, future of all of this. And that's one reason we're here, is to, you know, to sit down with all of you folks and be able to figure out what that is and where can we help each other. So uh, if you come to our presentation, which is just up here at the front, you're going to see essentially what we built, uh, how we built it, and uh, how we launched it. Um, one of our uh, you know, endeavors was, how do we actually get Canadians to run tests? Um, it's not quite as easy as it seems. And then I've got a, a little bit of talking about NDT, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I feel horrible standing up here. Uh, much like Chris was saying, you're, you're talking about NDT, and there's Rich right there. So it's like, OK, this is weird. But <laughs> we're going to tell you what we learned in doing all of this stuff and where we think you know, we'd like to move forward on. Uh, as well, Yachin's going to talk a bit about how we moved our platform, which was running on servers that we hosted, uh, up onto the Amazon Web Services as well. And we did create a national lander, and that's what we've been using for uh, quite a few years. But then we went into city-specific landers, building them for the cities and allowing them to be able to dig into that data itself. And then just a brief bit about you know, building the Internet in Canada. Um, so, yeah, come to our uh, talk and you'll learn all about that and more. So, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm An Xi from AccessNow. So, uh, today uh, my colleague Burhan will join us uh, with me to discuss about the coalition work. Uh, which is the Keep It On Coalition. Um, so uh, the Keep It On Coalition is a coalition to fight. Uh, a, the mission of the Keep, Keep It On is to stop and prevent governments uh, in this world from uh, uh, deliberately and intentionally ordering disruptions of networks or means or ways of communications. Uh, specifically with the purpose of uh, information control or communication control. Um, why we are fighting on these issues? Well, uh, basically what we call internet shutdown or internet dis disruptions, uh, or sometimes it's called blackouts or kill switch, uh, depending on the different types of ne network shutdowns. Uh, it is uh, usually like this comes to people's mind as a freedom experience of e expression issue, uh, but actually, like internet shutdowns is a lot of uh, it touches upon a lot of issue fronts uh, such as connectivity and development, uh, net neutrality, and sometimes it also has to do with digital security and privacy issues because a lot of instances where there's a network shutdown, people tends to find alternative ways to get on, uh, back online or stay connected. Uh, and a lot of oftentimes, like we're talking about VPNs or circumvention technologies uh, or the use of mesh networks. And uh, that also creates some of the uh, privacy issues because some countries actually criminal 
criminalize uh, such alternative technologies. Uh, and we can, uh, this is a personal story that we collect uh, to put in, uh, internet shutdown uh, into context. Um, so like in Ethiopia, basically there was an internet shutdown for over four months uh, from last year to this year. And uh, the internet went back on, uh, went back on around uh, April this year. Uh, and this shutdown actually affected a lot of people uh, in the, in, on the ground locally. Uh, this is an example of uh, an activist, a human rights activist who is trying to do advocacy work and because of the shutdown, like he basically uh, were, ne were not able to c conduct his work and also stay connected to all of his resources, uh, which actually put a lot of threats to the resources, especially if you're an investigation journalist and investigating really critical issues, sometimes it's put threats to your resources on the ground. Um, so, how bad is the situation of uh, network shutdowns? These are some uh, initial data we collected through multiple uh, data bases. Um, by the way, so uh, the coalition is a global coalition right now it has 173 member organizations from uh, approximately uh, 66 countries and regions. Uh, and the coalition is based on, basic, basically contains uh, civil society organizations, advocacy groups, research centers uh, like MLab, um, and also a lot of measurement labs. We do have uh, a corporate, like a private sector and other public sec sector engagement strategies, but they are not technically in the coalition. They are like friends of the coalition, so we do have like a relatively sophisticated collaboration model. Um, and the, these are uh, all the data we collected uh, primarily between 2016 and 2017. So the challenge for uh, collecting data on internet shutdowns is that a lot of times we have to do retrospective uh, data collection uh, because uh, just because of the complexity of the world, you know, like a lot of rural areas when there is a no shutdown, uh, when there is a shutdown, people would have no way to, most of people have no way to know. Uh, um, and for, from like a measurement labs, uh, measurement perspective, like there is a lot of irregular internet traffic and it's really hard to gauge what actually happened on the ground. Um, we do see a, a, a huge increase in, in terms of the numbers of shutdowns uh, and also in terms of the duration of shutdowns and also the sophist sophistications of shutdowns. Um, because originally, like we are talking about a power grid off or a kill switch for like a, a signal towers or like cut down the cables. And now we have more sophisticated ways from the government in including like a setting middle box or uh, actually uh, shutting down services like applications. Um, so like for instance, like in Kashmir's case, uh, the, the local government in Kashmir has a habit, uh, not a habit, has a tradition of shutting down network every other day uh, under, the, under the public water uh, section 144, uh, the, uh, the public safety department will shut down the 3G, 2G, and also other over-the-top services, uh, these kind of shutdowns. Uh, and also we have another case or model in Cameroon. There were like a two, uh, 230 days of, in, in, of entire shutdowns, which happened two times in Cameroon. One time, both times is like uh, more than uh, three months. Uh, so because of the complexity, complexity of the issues, we really have a lot of challenges to talking about collections of data. So uh, basically in this section, we are going to talk about uh, three major challenges we are facing now and hopefully um, with the expertise in the, um, everybody here, we can come up with a solution of more automated and efficient way to share and collect data. And uh, so that session will be in the conference room across the way. Oh, can I grab the clicker? Thank you. <laughs> that session will be in the conference room across the way so that um, Berhan, her uh, Anchi's colleague, can join from Ethiopia remotely.
Hi. So yesterday I spoke briefly about the importance of demand side data. Um, and so today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the recent and ongoing research uh, that we've done in the Global South. Uh, it's on the demand side data, national re representative sample surveys uh, in identifying the barriers to digital equality. Um, so just to give you a brief, um, uh, we've done pretty well on getting mobiles into people's hands, and that, those are just the red bar that you can see. Uh, these are the countries that uh, we've got the numbers crunched for now. There are a couple of more that will be added on. And the num uh, countries are ordered in um, income, uh, by income level. So Argentina being the highest and Mozambique being the lowest. Um, so if you look at that, um, the blue bar, which is internet use, and if I take India, for example, 19% of the population aged 15 to 65 access the internet. That's 80% not online of a 1 billion population. It's pretty sizable. Um, so if you look at, by and large, the issues, um, sorry, those numbers are just the sample sizes from each country. Uh, but if you look, by and large, it's pretty interesting. If you look at the high-income countries, mostly concentrated in Latin America, you find that there's more sophisticated use, and so the issues are also more about privacy and cybersecurity, uh, viruses, and so on. If you look at the poorest countries, mostly concentrated in Africa, the issue is more towards cost and affordability. And then somewhere in the middle is um, Asia, where the issues are more on quality of service. And so we looked at quality of service um, in Asia, and my colleagues will be talking about Africa as well, uh, and we'll be going into more depth um, and I will hand it over now to my colleague in Africa. <coughs> right. Okay. Right. Uh, <coughs> so in, in our session, we'll be uh, trying to uh, give some insights to some of the research we've done in Africa. Uh, from aspects of access, uh, which she introduced and also my colleague will talk about. Uh, but I will focus on uh, issues of, of performance of internet. Uh, so you may have heard about this. This is a sort of something that has been talked about for, for a long time in terms of how uh, poorly uh, connected the networks are in Africa in terms of uh, limited peering and maybe using uh, uh, circuitous routes to exchange traffic that is supposed to be exchanged uh, within. So I will uh, discuss some of the recent research we've done in, in, in that regard to see how far we've come uh, with, with uh, the introduction of many exchange points. And also then uh, we'll look at some of the studies we've done in terms of understanding the latencies within countries uh, with, with the progression of, 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 the, of the networks. How uh, much have we improved in terms of the delays that we experience within particular countries, uh, but also within neighboring countries. So having done that, we actually were able to come up with certain uh, clusters uh, that we see certain countries uh, coming together, having good connectivity between themselves, uh, but having very poor delay, I mean high delay with, with other uh, or the rest of the countries. So uh, that also we'll just, uh, discuss if you want to know how we covered uh, that and how we came up with the clusters. Um, and then uh, my colleague will talk a little bit about what else we did. So my name is Sarah, and the other thing we'll talk about is content hosting. We wanted to see where content that people in the continent are accessing is hosted, and what kind of impact it has on the speeds, on um, uh, RTT, and things like that. So of course, a lot of the content is th that people access is not content host uh, local content. It's things like Facebook or things like that, but then we focused on African news websites. So we'll show you that and show you where the content is hosted. And then we'll look at trends, throughput trends from 2013 to 2018 to see if we've been improved or gone down and also to look at things like delays, how we are performing. Uh, we'll take a look at rural versus urban performance to see if you get same speeds in urban centers and rural centers. But then we look at it as a continent, then we break it down to regions, north, east, west, south, and central. Then we look at countries in those regions. So that's the kind of stuff we'll invite you to join us. All right, and then uh, at the end, uh, we'll again talk about this uh, web, uh, web application website that we uh, developed uh, uh, in collaboration with AFRINIC, where I was working, and uh, also with ISOC uh, ZA, uh, that's the uh, ISOC chapter in, in Cape Town. Uh, 
uh, where we developed this, uh, this uh, sort of website to try and uh, provide a more uh, accessible way of uh, providing internet uh, data, statistics, uh, about uh, access levels, number of people using the internet in different countries and so on. So we're calling this platform called uh, WIDA, for World Internet Data Explorer. Uh, we're, we're pulling data from a, a few places, including APNIC. So APNIC has lots of data about number of users, uh, market share, things like that. So we've, we're pulling all that data uh, regularly and uploading it into this application. So it provides a very easy visualization if you want to see how many users are in a particular country or you want to compare side by side uh, different countries. So come and, and, and hear about this, uh, this project wider. We want to e expand it and we want to get more uh, collaborations out of it and see how best we can provide internet uh, statistics to the, to the world.